Welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship on this beautiful day God has given us, we welcome you. We are so glad that you're joining with us in this special time. If this is your first time to join in Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, wow, we are so excited that you have chosen to do that today. We want to encourage you and everyone to use our contact form. The link to that is provided in the header to this uh, worship time and also in, uh, in the comment section. There's a link there. We just encourage you to use that. This is a way that we're going to be able to get to know you and can connect with you, can help you to grow in your faith. You can put your name, your email address right there. That's the way we can get the e-newsletter to you, which is the best way to know about everything that's going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and all of the opportunities for faith and service. And also there is a place on that contact form for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we encourage you to please use that contact form today. Now when we do gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, this means that, well, we're going to participate. We encourage you to uh, turn off other devices and distraction and fully engage in this time of worship. It's not just a random video that you're watching. This is worship together. So fully engage it, maybe light a candle to help you to focus in, and then sing the songs and pray when we're praying and listen in and just fully participate in everything that's going on. On. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And this means that the way we are in worship together today, the way we're in the comment section, the way we may be gathered with people around us, the way that we are worshiping with the entire community and out into the world, that all of it is going to be a blessing to everyone that is involved. Again, we are so glad that you have joined with us for worship. I want to give a special shout out to our teachers and students who are beginning their new school year, of course, during this season. We're going to have a special blessing for you all and for your backpacks and work bags. So if you want to gather those, you should get those together for in a few minutes few minutes we'll be sharing in that special time of blessing. But everyone, welcome to worship. Hi, I'm Maria LaFrenz. I'm a part of the DAUMC youth group. Hi, I'm Andrea LaFrenz, and I'm a member at DAUMC. Please receive this call to worship. We are called to love one another because love is from God. God's love is poured in us from our birth. We are called to extend the love of God to all people. God's love is taught to us through the witness of God's faithful people. We are called to share God's love in all that we say and do. In our welcoming and in our actions, may God's love be made known. Amen. Please join us in singing, Gather Us In.
Hi, I'm Jim Bogue. I ring in the Wesley Ringers and I sing in the Chancellor Choir. Please join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray our opening prayer. Holy God, on this day we gather with people in different places and times to worship you. We know that each and every person is precious and valuable to you. But too often, in the midst of the hustle and bustle, we put on our blinders to just get through the day, and we miss so much. We do not notice the people along the way, and do not follow Jesus' lead to express your welcome and love. Forgive us and help us, loving God. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to love, just as you see and hear and love. Thank you for the honor of partnering with you in worship and in welcome. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say our peace be with you and respond and also with you. Share in the comments with one another, with me and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. I'm Joe. I'm Diana and we help lead the community garden at the church. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Tracy Sisk, and I'm part of the Chancellor Choir and Lydia Circle. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Becca Johnson. And I'm Joe Johnson, and we're co-chairs of the Missions Committee here at Douglas, and peace, peace be with you. you. Hello, it is time for Small Talk. I want to encourage all of the kids who are joined with us in online worship to get in really close to your device and your screen for our special Small Talk. This is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So kids, come on in really close and everybody get ready for Small Talk. Hi everybody, and it is officially Back to School Sunday. And for those of you that have been in church, you have gotten your back to school survival bag. Those of you that haven't been to church in person, uh, we're gonna share with you what's in the bag and why it's there. And if you want your own bag, stop by the church, run in and grab one. Okay, Log, can you empty the bag for us? We have our back to school list. Oh dear. Okay, well, yeah. So we have, a rubber band to, to stretch your mind this year. We have a chocolate kisses and hugs, okay, to remind you how loved you are. A puzzle, well, we're not to the balloon yet, Maude. The puzzle piece, because you're an important piece in this world, I think this is actually the piece of a a dog or something, but you're an important piece. A balloon, as Laud has um, demonstrated, to help you reach for the sky, like that. Crayons, color your day cheerful and bright, even when you're feeling a little down. And when you're feeling a little down, you might need some tissues, so we've got tissues in there. And most importantly, a cross. Okay, to remind you that God is always with you wherever you go. Have a great school year, guys. Bye. It's been our honor with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church over these last several weeks to offer a special time of blessing for all of our students and teachers and staff that are entering into this new school year. I want to encourage our uh, teachers and students and staff to get in close for this special time of blessing. And if you have your backpack or work bag, you're gonna wanna bring that uh, up in here with you. And then we have a special gift for all of our students that are coming back, going back to school. And if you'd like to receive that special gift, just give us a call in the church office. We'd love to be able to get that to you. But I encourage everybody now to join with me in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we know that learning is a gift from you. As we continue in this new school year, we thank you for the ability to learn many things in many ways. Help us remember to show our thanks for your gifts of learning by doing our very best each and every day. We ask that you bless our schools, teachers, classmates, and friends. 
We ask that you bless those who prepare our lunches, those who drive us to school, and those who keep our schools safe and clean. We ask your blessings, dear God, on all of these students, teachers, and staff of our church family. Strengthen them, protect them, give them courage and compassion, help them to be safe and healthy. And we ask your blessing on our backpacks and work bags too. They hold the work of each student and teacher carried from home to school and back again. As these backpacks and work bags are carried, help each one to be reminded of the love and care of their church family that surrounds them each and every school day. Loving God, bless this new school year and all who are involved, that it may be a time when we appreciate and fully use your good gift of learning. Amen. And again, we have that special gift for you, and please let us know if you'd like to receive one of those by giving us a call in the church office. Hi guys, Kevin with Douglas Avenue. Good morning. Today's Bible reading, uh, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Let's open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He is gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Over the past couple of years, my husband, Curtis, has been relearning to ride a motorcycle. He had one before we were married, but he had put that away uh, after we got married. But about a year and a half ago, he bought a 40-year-old Honda motorcycle out of a barn in Nokomis. It looks like a bright yellow motor scooter, so we call it here in our family, Mr. Scooty. Curtis really seems to enjoy it, riding it, fixing it, the honks of admiration he gets uh, from other motorists around him as he goes about town. And I admit, it's a lot of fun. I also admit I was particularly pleased that he signed up for the free motorcycle rider safety course that is offered here in Illinois. As a part of that course, he brought back some bumper stickers that say, Start seeing motorcycles. Maybe you've seen that slogan before on bumper stickers, on yard signs, or on billboards. And ever since Curtis brought those bunker, bumper stickers home that day, I think I am seeing motorcycles everywhere. I feel I didn't used to see that many of them, but now it seems like I see them all the time. It's like when you buy a car that is a bright color, like yellow or red or blue instead of black or white or silver, and all of a sudden you become aware of all the other cars that are brightly painted, and you begin to believe that you are seeing more of them, that they are all over the place. There's actually a name for this. It's called the Bader meinhof phenomenon, or the frequency bias. It's a common cognitive bias in which someone becomes highly aware of seeing something for the first time, so then they notice it more often, which leads them to mistakenly believe that it is happening or appearing more frequently. Now, the reverse of this phenomenon is also true. Unless we happen to take notice of seeing something, we will often mistakenly underestimate its frequency. Most of us think that there are way fewer yellow cars than there actually are because we aren't looking for them and we don't then for remember seeing them. Unfortunately, this is worse for motorcycles because we also aren't expecting them on the road because we're expecting to see cars. People often don't even remember seeing them. 
after hitting a motorcycle with a car, the most frequent thing a driver says is, I didn't even see them. Hence the admonition of the bumper stickers and signs, start seeing motorcycles. What are some of the things that we don't see because we don't expect to see them? More importantly, who are some of the people we don't see because we're not looking for them? Our reading from the Bible today that Kevin shared with us is the story of Jesus seeing someone that no one else was looking for. It's the story of how we might begin to see the world with the eyes of Christ. It's the story of Zacchaeus. Now let's be honest, this is a favorite Bible story for many of us because we know the song. If you know the song, sing along with me. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And when the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today for I'm going to your house today. Hope you enjoyed singing that with me. Now, more than just a story and a song about smaller people, I think this story from the Bible is fundamentally a story about seeing and being seen. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector in Jericho, and he was rich. For some people, being rich automatically means you're probably a good, hard-working, industrious member of society. But that was not how Zacchaeus was seen. Like some rich people today, Zacchaeus got rich by taking more than he needed to live from people who couldn't really afford to live on what was left over. You see, tax collectors like Zacchaeus didn't receive a salary. Instead, they added whatever amount they desired to receive for themselves to the taxes that they collected from others. Then the tax collector paid the required tax amount to the Roman governor and kept whatever else they had managed to collect. If people didn't pay the full amount of taxes, including what was tacked on by the tax collector, then they would be punished for failure to pay taxes. Zacchaeus was a rich tax collector. Though he was rich, he was not seen by the people of Jericho as a good person. But Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. We don't really know why, but something moved inside Zacchaeus' heart. And he wanted to see who this Jesus person was and see if he could learn something by looking at him. I think that Zacchaeus had probably heard about Jesus. He might even have learned about some of the things that Jesus had been saying and doing, such as how God's love is for everyone, or how God forgives sinners and accepts people no matter what they'd done, or how God wanted to bring hope and reconciliation to all people. Zacchaeus probably heard all of these things and heard about Jesus' healings and other miracles, but apparently he wanted to see Jesus for himself. So he climbed up a tree along the road where Jesus would be walking and he waited to see Jesus. As Jesus was walking along, however, he saw Zacchaeus first. In Luke chapter 19 verse 5 it says, when Jesus came to the place he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus comes down and to the embarrassment of the religious people of Jericho, Jesus goes and stays at his house. Zacchaeus responds to Jesus by repenting and offering to give half of his possessions to the poor and to pay back anyone he has defrauded four times what he might have taken. In response, Jesus declares, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. But why did Jesus see Zacchaeus? Why did he notice him? Why didn't he just walk on by? Throughout the Gospel of Luke, we hear the stories of how Jesus is noticing and seeing people who are overlooked by others. 
from the prodigal son to the lost sheep to the traveler saved by the good Samaritan, Jesus keeps teaching his followers to pay attention to the overlooked, to not be contented with just noticing crowds of people like themselves, to keep their eyes open for those who need love, welcome, and forgiveness in their lives. At the end of Zacchaeus' story in verse 10, Jesus again shares his mission to see the overlooked when he says, For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. So why does Jesus see Zacchaeus? Because he was looking for him. He was looking for him. Our church is in the middle of a season of transition. Each week we are seeing new people join us for worship in person and online. Each week we are seeing new people connecting with our ministries, looking for acceptance and hope and forgiveness and love. And each week we are seeing our ministry leaders offering Jesus' grace to people who are looking for it. I see these things happening because I'm looking for them. I see our amazing volunteers feeding bodies and hearts through Compass for Kids and Wouldn't It Be Lovely, the food pantry, vaccination clinics, and more. I see our youth group gathering safely for fun and service and prayer. I see our new greeter team making in-person worship more welcoming and friendly to new people. I see our tech crew producing and broadcasting online worship each and every week so that we can reach out to our whole community with Christ's love. I see our small group leaders gathering children and adults online and in person so people can connect with God and one another and grow in faith and service and learning. I see our community gardeners tending the soil and witnessing to God's creative goodness. I see our prayer team gathering it all and bathing it all in prayer, uh, all of our joys, our hurts, our ministries, all bathed in that powerful prayer. I see so many of you giving your hearts and your time and your money and your lives to embody God's love in everything you do, out in the far reaches of our community, right inside of our church building, connected online and in social media and everywhere in between. What do you see? It's amazing how we tend to see the things that we're looking for and overlook the things that we don't expect to find. In the story of Zacchaeus, Jesus seems pretty clear what he's looking for. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. As people who love and follow Jesus, this is our work too. In order to offer Christ salvation, first we must find. And in order to find, first we must seek. And in order to seek, first we must open our eyes and start seeing. Start seeing people. Start seeing the overlooked. Start seeing the needy. Start seeing the lonely. Start seeing the despairing. Start seeing the shamed. Start seeing the brokenhearted. Start seeing the lost start seeing others because when we start to see then we start to find and that's when we get to partner with Jesus in the powerful work of loving healing and transforming people situations and systems let's look and see amen Please join us in singing, Pass It On.
have you pray with me today. Dear God of all, all of us, from day one on the day of creation, you created a great variety, many kinds of each created being. I'm always flabbergasted by the multitude of types of giraffes through dragonflies. In fact, I googled it and there's about 3,000 types of dragonflies. Truly, you enjoy diversity, your nature, and it brings you great pleasure. I believe you created we humans and find great pleasure in us. It is from this belief I come to you today, knowing you care with a great caring that only a creator could have. This morning we come to you as part of this diversity to ask you to hear our praise, our appreciation of being heard and a, a participant of your guiding presence. Thank you. Thank you for putting that yearning in us, just like you put in Zacchaeus, to be in your presence, to see you enough to get out of our comfort zone and see you. Oh, how we want to see you and be seen by you today. Oh God, our, our country and our world, Lord, our hearts see the fear that abounds, that sways our feelings, and sometimes, often times, clouds our thoughts, and even how we see the actions of others. Please allow us to love like you, be loved, and how you love today and tomorrow. Today we bring you those who are at risk of losing the roof over their heads, those who are in danger at their work and living their daily lives, danger financially, danger from health situations due to COVID, cancer, and a myriad of other illnesses. Also dangers of lifestyles and situations that are hazardous, danger of feeling like giving up. We know you see these predicaments and are now stopped in your tracks to show us you see us personally, individually, and thoroughly. Even the parts of us that we don't show anyone or even admit to ourselves. We turn them over to you so we are free to follow you, climb out of our secret place, our hiding place, to give you total freedom to enter our lives. Come and be by our side. Come and feed us. Come and walk with us. Come and talk with us. Come and be all you have promised to be. Please help us take all this wonder in and transform our lives walking with you. Amen. And now will you call, do the Lord's Prayer with me, please. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Giving generously is one of the ways that we open our eyes and see what it is that Jesus is doing and see the people around us and so many needs and ways that we can be in service and in ministry to all kinds of people. Thank you for the ways that you give your financial gifts to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I want to encourage you to continue in that giving. You can give online using our giving portal on our webpage. The link to that is right in the comment section. You can give by setting up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. If you need help with that, just let us know in the church office. And you can give by sending in church to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We thank you for all of your generosity and we want to encourage encourage you again today to use that contact form so that you can receive our e-newsletter that has all of the ways that you can connect and that we can connect together and serve and show love to one another and to our community. And I just want to lift up a couple of those opportunities now. This week, we are wrapping up our special call for financial offerings to support the United Methodist Committee on Relief, or UMCOR, in the midst of multiple natural and human-made disasters that are happening right now, from Afghanistan to Haiti to hurricane and wildlife, wildfire relief 
Your United Methodist Committee on Relief is hard at work, providing emergency aid and early response efforts and will continue to work until the work is finished. Please give generously as 100% of your gift goes to provide help on the ground right now where it is needed most. You can give using that online giving portal on the DAUMC website. You can just simply click on the UMCOR in the drop down menu and you can also send your checks to the church made payable to DAUMC with UMCOR in the memo line. Thank you for your generous giving during this time of crisis. This fall, we are honored to be able to offer a grief share support group for help, healing, and encouragement after the death of a spouse, child, family member, or friend. This group will begin weekly meetings on Tuesday, September 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. and you can participate either online or in person at DAUMC. To learn more and to register, please see the e-news or call the church office. And then mark your calendars now and be a part of this year's Crop Walk to End Hunger, which is on Sunday, October 3rd. This year's two-mile walk through Springfield seeks to raise awareness of and funds to end food insecurity around the world and right here at home. We're looking for folks to join our Crop Walk team from Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and folks who will sponsor our walkers too. As always, you can get the full scoop on how to participate in the e-newsletter or give the church office a call for this and all of the ways to connect and grow in your faith and service to Jesus with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you. Please join us in singing Friend of God.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We love to be able to worship with you and we pray that this whole experience has been uplifting and meaningful and empowering to you and your life of faith and that you will continue to join with us in online worship or join with us for in-person worship at 815 and 1030 in the sanctuary at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want to again encourage you to use that contact form and remember that there is a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. We love to be able to pray with you, so please use that form today. And now, as you go into your day, go knowing that God sees you and loves you, that Jesus Christ sees you and loves you and offers you healing every day, and that you go with the Holy Spirit that's gonna open your eyes so that you can see and be a part of God and Jesus' amazing love and work and healing in this world right now, seeing those needs and being an answer to those needs. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.